peace. Shalom Israel, most high in Christ, blessed. That's right. You know what day it is. It's Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. That's right. And I got a few things that I'm going to discuss with you today. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy. There's always been controversy about who the ancient Israelites are. And I know we can we can go at it from different angles. Of course, as the Bible is our main foundation. Uh, many times we get emails, uh, don't the Egyptians look like the ancient Israelites? And the answer is yes. The ancient Egyptians were never Caucasians. This is, listen good, this is what white folks do. Because there was an era when we were unable to read, y'all know us about slavery, Jim Crow time. Uh, not all of us, but most of us could not read. And what they did was create and twist history. There was a time in history when Alexander the Greek began to conquer and dominate the world. And this it took place around 333 BC, 333 BC. And one of his generals named Ptolemy, Ptolemy was a general that overcame and took over Egypt. And that's where you begin to see the whitewashing of the black images there and them putting their images in Egypt as the Egyptians. What do many schools do today when they show Egypt? They show Europeans, Caucasians. But you got to go back, go back before the, before the time of the Ptolemy dynasty. Go back before that. All right. Now, watch this. Remember, Moses was raised in the house of Pharaoh. Moses could not be raised in the house of Pharaoh if he was Caucasian. Let me show you something. Let me show you something right now, right here. I'm going to go to Exodus. What do I want? I believe it's chapter 4. I believe it is. Mm, 4 verse 6. This is when the Lord was proving to Moses his power. Exodus 4, verse 6. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, put thou thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. What would have been the miracle if Moses was already a white man? What would the miracle have been? Moses would have put his hand in his bosom, took it out and been like, yeah, I don't get it. What? My hand's still white. It lacks melon. That's what it means. It lacked men melanin. So that wouldn't have been a miracle. The miracle was Moses had him. He was a melanated black man. So when he took his hand out and it says, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. That was the miracle. The melanin was taken from his hand. So now it's like, oh, shoot. It's one of them things. Now watch seven. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. So Moses put his hand back into his bosom in the garment. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh, meaning it turned again as his other flesh on his hands, his arms, his face, his neck, his chest, his back, the legs, so forth and so on. OK, so Moses was a black man, according to biblical scriptures. Now, uh, there's more. You can read Numbers chapter 12, verse 9 through 12, where God cursed Miriam with leprosy and it says she became white as snow and Aaron cried for her on her behalf saying alas my lord let her not be as one dead whoa ain't that something for you now exodus chapter 11 verse 7 it reads this it says but against any of the children of israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So when it when Egypt had Israel in captivity, that was one black nation dominating another black nation. It's no difference than when ancient Babylon had the Israelites in captivity. Babylon was the ancient Cushites, the ancient Ethiopians, okay, which had the children of Israel in captivity. So what's the difference? The difference is the seed. The seed. Remember, Noah had three sons, uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Uh, the Egyptians, just like the Babylonians, came out of Ham. The Israelites came out of Sem or Shem. Okay. Here's my compact Bible dictionary by Zondervan. We're going to go look up Ham on page 213. Page 213. 
We're gonna go down here. All right, let me get it on, in the, on the screen clear so you can see it, so I can see it. It reads, Ham, perhaps hot. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, meaning he became the forefather of the dark races. Notice what's underlined, not the Negroes. He did not become the forefather of the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. So the scholars know that the Negro race, what you call so-called African-Americans, those that went into slavery, do not come from Ham. We come from Shem. Who are the so-called Negroes? Now understand this. There's a remnant of us still in Africa, Shemites, okay? You have two groups, two different seeds that dominate the continent of Africa. Those that descend from Ham and those that descend from Shem. And there's a lot of intermingling there. So that's why Christ said, listen, let the wheat and the tares grow together. He said, my sheep hear my voice in another scripture. So that's why we don't bug out over that. But we have to understand that there's two groups there on the continent of Africa. One group descends from Ham, the ancient Hamites. Those are the real Africans. Like when you read about the Philistines, the Jebusites, so forth and so on. And you have the Shemites. Those are the Israelites that remain behind whose sons and daughters were taken from and carried away to this part of the world and other parts, all right? Now, there's a lot of controversy regarding the origin or the race of the so-called Negro. Uh, during colonialist, colonialist times, they were saying, they had the assumption that maybe the Negroes were ancient Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians. So I'm gonna show you a book regarding that subject. George M. Fredrickson, The Black Image in the White Mind, The Debate on Afro-American Character and Destiny, 1817 to 1914. All right, now this book is a used book, and I, I pretty much realize I like a lot of used books because you'll see how Europeans pass these books one to another, and they'll, they'll highlight certain things in the books that's meant for their own people to read and not us. So now let's look at this part here that they have highlighted. I'm on page 74. All right, I'm gonna start here. In the 1840s, Morton collaborated with George R. Glyden, an Egyptologist, who provided him with mummy heads and information about the racial significance of Egyptian tomb inscriptions. In Crania Egyptica, published in 1844, Morton pointed out that both cranial, let's talk about the skull, and archeological evidence showed that the Egyptians were not Negroes. So Negroes, you know, is talking about so-called American blacks. As abolitionists and colonialists had maintained, and that in fact, blacks had been regulated, relegated, excuse me, let me read that again, and that in fact, blacks had been relegated to the same servile position in ancient Egypt as in modern America. So I want y'all to see that. Blacks had been relegated to the same servile position in ancient Egypt as in modern American. America. So who were the slaves in ancient Egypt? All right. So here's another book, Pictorial History of Israel, Jacob A. Rubin and Maya Barkai. I'm going here because a pro previous book said that the blacks in ancient Egypt were relegated to the same servile position as in modern America. So who were the blacks in ancient Egypt? If they were not Egyptians, let's see who they were. Oh, look, what do we have here? What do we have here? The slaves in ancient Egypt were the Israelites. What color are they? Black. This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt, you see, you get these dumb, dumb Egyptologists that say that there's no proof or evidence 
of the Israelites ever existing. This is from the tomb. Let's read this again. This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt. Let's look at Israel, please. Let's look at Israel. Do y'all see Israel here? Do y'all see them? Hmm? Hmm? This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt was found in the Theban tomb of Rechmir, governor and vizier at the time of Thutmose III, about 1450 BCE, meaning before Christ existed. So before Christ came on the scene, during the time of Thutmose III, you see the Israelites were in captivity. Let's read this. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. Exodus chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Let's look at the Israelites again. They are black people. I want you all to see that. And I didn't write the book. I didn't write this book. Neither did I put this book together. Okay. Proving that the Israelites are black. Okay. Okay. Let's, and that goes right back to this book right here. The image of the black in the black image in the white mind. I'm going to go back to that page again. Where I was at? What was it? I'm going right back here. It's page 74. I'm just getting to the point about the blacks. Let's get that again. I'm going to start here. At, uh, the racial significance of Egyptian tomb inscriptions in crania. Talking about skull shapes, uh, Egyptica, published in 1844. Morton pointed out that both cranial, referring to the skull, skull shape, and archaeological evidence showed that the Egyptians were not Negroes. The ancient Egyptians was not the same race as the American blacks, as abolitionists and colonialists had maintained, because that was a thought. Here it comes, and in that, and that, in fact, blacks so-called Negroes, had been relegated to the same servile, meaning slave position in ancient Egypt as in modern America. So the slaves in ancient Egypt are the same slaves in modern America, the Israelites. All right, look at this. Picture history of Jewish civilization. All right, I'm going to go to page 12. Do y'all see these black people with yokes of iron on their necks? I'm asking the question again. Do y'all see these black people with yokes of iron on their necks? Look at this one. Yoke of iron. Yoke of iron. Do y'all see that? Let's see where this came from. The thousands of war captives who were transformed into slaves made it possible for the Egyptian kings to implement their feats of engineering. Chain captives are shown on these painted clay-facing plaques from a building erected by Ramses II in honor of the king's brave warriors from the period of the, what is that, uh, 19th dynasty. This is in the Louvre, Paris. Don't those look like the same yokes of iron that you saw on your ancestors in America? Belled slave collar. Y'all see that? Belled slave collar. A slave collar for persistent runaways. These are the same things we just saw in ancient Egypt. For runaways. Look at this. That's what we just saw in the previous book. And remember what the image, the book said in the, about the image of the black and the white mind. Remember it said the blacks in Egypt were re relegated to the same servile position uh, from Egypt as in America. <laughs> to be sold a cargo of 94 Negroes. So the Negroes in ancient Egypt were the same, are the same Negroes here in America and scattered worldwide.
what we just saw was those bell collars, those are yokes of iron that the Bible prophesies that the same things that occurred to us in ancient Egypt would happen to us in modern day Egypt, which is America and her adjacent uh, allies. When you read Deuteronomy 28, look at verse 32. I'll just get, no, I'll just go to verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. Meaning you got to serve your enemies for food, water, and clothing, okay? And in want of all things, all things means education, religion, whatever, uh, beth, birth, death, whatever, uh, medicine, you got to go to your enemies. And he, meaning your enemies, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Didn't we just see images of that? You can't deny that this happened. In order, for, in order for you to say the Bible is not factual, you would have to disprove slavery ever existed. You would have to disprove all the artifacts of slavery that occurred to our ancestors here in modern day America. You'd have to prove it all a myth. It never happened. It's impossible. Impossible. So what is this? This is how you know the Bible's a true book. That's I don't listen to idiots that say, how do you know the Bible is real? I just read a prophecy, a 3,000 year old prophecy of what would happen to the Israelites in the future that they would have to serve their enemies and for food, clothing, and water, and one of all things, and their enemies would put yokes of iron on their neck until they have been destroyed. Did that happen to us? You bet your bagonzos it did. You better believe it did. So, 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 moving on, moving on. Let's go to, uh, where do I want to go? I want to go to Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26, watch this. This is another, another prophecy. This is why you black men and black women always confuse here in society today. Why do things happen? Why is it going wrong for us? Leviticus 26, 17. Where's the love? Moses says this in the spirit of, that's why I'm going to say it, the spirit of Christ, because that's who was in the prophets. Leviticus 26, verse 17. And I will set my face against you. This is God speaking to us through Moses. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. In case you don't know what R-E-I-G-N means, it means rule. They that hate you shall rule over you, and you shall flee when none pursueth you. Wow. Haven't we been living this nightmare? When will it stop? It'll only stop when 144,000 repent, 12,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. That's when it will stop. The curse will be lifted and we will be delivered. This is why the white man puts abortion clinics all throughout black and Latino neighborhoods to kill the uh, prospect of the coming uh, anointed ones of the 144,000. Kill them. Abortions, cops, kill them, incarcerate them. Okay, send COVID-19, kill them, kill them, death and destruction. This is their plan. This is their plot. This whole thing, brothers and sisters, revolves around Jacob. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. Where did the love go? Where did the love? <laughs> Luke chapter 1. Y'all know this one. Well, at least the Israelites. So you Christians, just listen and please take notes. Luke chapter 1 verse 68 down to verse 74. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Did it say Israel or did it say Lord God of everybody on the planet earth? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Now remember, I'm reading the New Testament. Where am I reading from? The New Testament. For he has visited and redeemed his people. I thought he's visited and redeemed the whole planet earth. See, when you read John 3, 16 about for God so loved the world, the world that he so loved that whosoever believeth in him should not perish is the world of the Israelites. You can fact check that in, I write this down, Christians, Isaiah 45, verse 17, John 18, verse 20, proves that the world is the world of the Jews, the world of the Israelites. Let's read it again. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. And has raised up in horn of salvation for us. Us. That don't mean everybody. 
in the house of his servant David. So that horn of salvation is whom the world calls Jesus Christ, who is truly our black Messiah. Verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So the prophets always prophesied about the coming Messiah from the book of Genesis. It was prophetic that a Messiah would come. The Messiah would come. Watch this. Verse 71. You Christians get ready for verse 71. Then we should be saved from our enemies. Who's our enemies? The same ones we just read about in Deuteronomy 28, 48, where it said your enemy, you shall serve your enemies for, uh, what did it say? Food, clothing, water, and want of all things. And your enemies would put yokes of iron on your neck. Verse 71 again. Now you got the thought. Now you got an idea that we should be saved from our enemies. You see that word that S there on enemies? Plural. Not one, not the spiritual demon, Satan. Your enemies who put yokes of iron on your neck. You know who that was? The Dutch, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the French, the German, uh, the English, and America. So forth and so on. Oh, don't forget the Arabs. Oh, the Chinese too. Oh, yes, and Japan. But that's for another lesson. Verse 71, and we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. You know what amazes me about that verse? You ask a black Christian, are you saved? And they'll go, yes, I'm saved. I'm washed in the blood of the lamb. I'm Holy Ghost filled and water baptized. Then their sons or daughters get beat upside the head, shot, killed, or incarcerated. And they go, Jesus, why is this happening to me? It happens, sister, because you're not saved. You're still in captivity. You are still being oppressed. You are still under the curses of God as recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 through 68. A book you've never read. Let's read verse 71 again. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers, our fathers. Wait, hold on. Who is our fathers? Watch this. Let's go on back now to Leviticus 26. Watch, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something real heavy. Leviticus chapter 26. The question I asked was about our fathers. You know, black Christians love to say this. It has nothing to do with your bloodline. You're stupid as hell. Watch this. Here's the prophecy. Leviticus 26, verse 45. But I will for their sakes, meaning for the Israelites' sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors. Let me read that again. But I will for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors. Your ancestors are the same fathers that's recorded in Luke chapter 1, verse 72. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. So let's go back to Leviticus 26, 45, one more time. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God, I am the Lord. Back to Luke, please. Back to Luke chapter one. Now we are in verse 73. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham, verse 74, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Do you hear this? And this, so once you read the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, they go together, they go together, your eyes will begin to open. The spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit will begin to open your spiritual eye or eyes. So now, so now that when you read the Bible, you can understand why things are affecting our people in modern day society. All right, now watch this. Let's go to Lamentations 3, verse 7. Bear with me. I'm not as fast as I used to be. I'm kind of slow. Watch this. Lamentations 3, verse 7. Listen, I want you to listen good to this. Listen good. It reads, He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. This captivity is heavy. He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. <laughs> Sometimes you want to leave. Sometimes you just want to get out and people won't let you out. Watch this. Job 19 and 8. Job 19 and 8. Job chapter 19, 
verse 8. Watch this. I know I'm going someplace. I'm building. Just, just bear with me. <laughs> Job 19, verse 8. It reads, He has fenced up my way that I cannot pass, and he has set darkness in my path. I'm trying to leave, and I got super neighborhood, the super neighbor over here blocking me in. This is what I'm dealing with oh, right now. This is who I'm dealing with. Napoleon, move out the way. My name's David Stewart. I don't care what your name is, get out the way. I don't care, move, move out the way, sir. Please hurry up so you can have this a-hole move out the way so I can leave. I asked you one question. I, no, it's none of your business. And I asked. It is not. No, no, it is my business. Mm-hmm. Why? You get the mayor of the, uh, the yeah. cul-de-sac? I'm president of the owner's association. Okay. These are private streets. And apparently you need a gate code to get in here, right? Yes, that's correct. So how did I get in here? I don't want to know where you're going. It was none of your business. I'm going out. That's where I'm going, but you're in my I'm way. I'm not arguing with you anymore. So then move out the way then. Tom, it's a bad day. I got the president of the homeowners association over here at this last stop. Got me blocked in so I can't leave. And he called the cops because he wants to know where I'm going and I didn't want to tell him. I, I don't have the mental capacity to deal with this right now. I'm trying to leave. What do you mean, why? None your business? Uh, did I deliver it to your house? Because it's none of your business, that's why. You're asking questions, you don't need to ask questions. All you need to do is have your buddy move his car so I can leave and go about my business. How do I make a wrong turn into a gated neighborhood? I need to have a gate code in order to get in, right? That's common sense, right? So if I had a gate, if I've been here, I had a gate code, right? That's none of your business, yet again. It sure as hell is it. I'm not in the wrong. I don't know who this is. Uh, what's your name? Uh-huh. I'm in the wrong, show me your badge then. Uh-huh. I don't give a f what you got. You do realize this is all private property. You do realize this is unlawful detainment, right? You, you have absolutely no reason and no right to hold me here to block me in with your car. Don't know you don't need to know anything. Yes, I do. This is private. Okay, that's fine. The private property that you own is probably somewhere up there. I own 118th of what you're sitting on. This street is private. 118th of what this I'm sitting on. City property. This street is maintained by the people that live in there. Mm -hmm. This is private. And apparently one of the people that live here ha it gave me a gate code. You're not helping me. You're being nosy. That's all you're doing. You're trying to use privilege and you're not getting it from me. You can apologize too. It wasn't your fault, sir. I, I don't understand what his need or purpose was for doing that. Um, normally, I probably could have handled it a little different, a little better, but emotionally, I got a lot of things going on. So I never left my seat, never left the truck, never took my seatbelt off. I'm finally out of there. I'm about to start driving seriously now. Thank y'all for being there for me. Um, I catch y'all on the flip side. All right, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter two. Now, I know a lot of you Christians probably don't are not aware of the Wisdom of Solomon, but it's in the book called the Apocrypha, which was all 
in the original King James Version Bible of 1611. It was also in the Latin Vulgate as well as in the Greek Septuagint. In fact, it was in all the Bibles prior, or I'll say this, the vast majority of them. Uh, the white man had it taken out in the uh, late 1700s because some slaves that were able to read used the books and writings of the Apocrypha as fuel for insurrection. All right. But here's the prophecy about the white man ruling us. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 10. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the aged gray hairs or the aged. Verse 11. Let our strength be the law of justice. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. So what does this mean when it says, let our strength be the law of justice? It means the white man sits in the throne of authority. They're the ones that dictate laws and write laws. They're the ones that use the law as their strength, their whipping stick. Verse, it reads on, for that which is feeble, we're the feeble ones, meaning we're the oppressed ones, blacks and brown, black and brown people, the Israelites, for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. We're worth nothing here in society. I know you black Christians, you like to think you're worth something here in society to the white man. Mm -mm, don't fool yourself. If it had not been a Lord who was on our side, now may Israel, now may Israel say, Psalms 124, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when, when, when men rose up against us, they would quickly have swallowed us up. So, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 10 and 11 tells us that the oppressor would dictate and write and use laws as their whipping stick. Now let's go to Psalms 94 and verse, uh, I'm going to read verse 20 and 21. Shall the throne of iniquity, the throne of iniquity, let's get the meaning of that first. The throne of iniquity means the kingdom of sin. Throne references a king or country. Iniquity represents sin. Shall the throne of iniquity, now let's make it plain. The throne of iniquity in this day and age, in these last days, is the United States of America, or in biblical terms, Babylon the Great. Let's read it again. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? A lot of you want to have fellowship with the so-called white man. You want to join with them. You want to associate yourselves with them. You assimilate with them. It reads, <laughs> shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law, which writes and dictates law, through for mischievous purposes. That's what it's seven, saying, which frameth mischief by a law. The white man uses law mischievously. They use it to manipulate and oppress black and brown people. Verse 21, they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. The righteous are the Israelites and condemn the innocent blood. What was it that we did wrong, officer? You crossed. Take your camera and point it across there at the red hand. Mm -hmm. That is a crosswalk. One, you weren't in the crosswalk. Two, there was a red sign. You both crossed. Oh, my bad. That's a $65 ticket apiece to get to my car. Uh, you are being legally detained. If we just crossed the street. We just crossed the street without following the sign. That was it. And we got stopped. The young man in this video's name is Devontae Shipman. And he stopped right here in Jacksonville, Florida, threatened with jail time for essentially jaywalking. You did do something illegal. You crossed the crosswalk. Yeah, that's I crossed against, the crosswalk. Against a red hand. I, I was sitting paying, right I there when you no, did it. Wasn't paying no attention. That's not that. You act like I really just committed a serious crime that's worth this time right now. It is worth the time. Walk to my car. I'm about to put you in jail. It's not often we report on jaywalking. It's a minor infraction. We've even seen cops do it. Shipman would later say one of the officers told him he was just stopping him to make sure he didn't have any guns, knives, or drugs on him. They even questioned why his friend was wearing a hoodie. You want me to walk around with no shirt? Then I'm gonna look more suspicious. That's up to you. No. Apparently you ain't got sure, free wheels. No, sure would make more sense to me than a hoodie. Damn, this crazy, bro. A nigga can't even walk across the street. I guess it's because a nigga black a nigga can't do nothing. I guess, like, I look like I'm doing something wrong. Shipman's story isn't unique, and it led us to question exactly how many people here in Jacksonville have experienced walking while black. Listen to me, I'm a, I am doing you a favor. I'm not telling you again. You got your ID on you? No, I don't. 
What's your name? Devontae Shipp. All right, so there's another infraction. In the state of Florida, you have to have an ID card on you identifying who you are. I can detain you up to seven hours until I can figure out who you are. Not only was Shipman given a $62 ticket for failing to obey a pedestrian signal, he was also cited for walking without an ID, which harkens back to troubling racist laws. And to be clear, it's actually a citation that's meant for motorists, but the cop tried to give that ticket to Shipman anyway. That charge was eventually dropped. The video struck a chord with thousands of people who shared it. And here in Jacksonville, many people can relate to Shipman's story. Why would you stop two black men crossing at an intersection? I was, I was shocked because it's like I didn't really think people actually get ticketed for things like this. You know what I mean? Like, especially not in that area. You got people that cross that intersection day and night, like continuously. So I'm trying to figure out, like, why was it this cop at this moment stopping us? In Florida, there are 28 laws pedestrians must observe while walking. They include everything from jaywalking to walking on the wrong side of the road to failing to cross the road at a right angle or the shortest route. Yes, that's a thing. We wanted to see how poverty and race factored into who's getting these tickets, so we requested data from the state. Here's what we found. In the last five years, Duval County police officers handed out 2,208 pedestrian citations. The most given citation in Duval County was for failing to cross in a crosswalk between adjacent intersections with traffic lights. But here's the thing. We examined those 658 citations and found that 54% of them were not given in locations with adjacent traffic lights. They were legally permitted to cross, yet they still received a ticket. If you're living in the county's three poorest zip codes, you're 5.9 times more likely to receive a pedestrian ticket than anyone else in Jacksonville. And if you're black, you're 2.7 times more likely to get a pedestrian ticket than if you're white. 30% of Jacksonville's population is black, but they receive 55% of the pedestrian tickets. That's the highest percentage in Florida among large counties. With high profile incidents of black men encountering police all across the country, Shipman decided to film this. You got people getting shot by police, you got people getting abused. It's just bro brutality that's just nonstop. So I just felt like I just needed to record it to prevent a situation. Getting stopped for jaywalking can feel so absurd that on more than one occasion, a person has called the cops on the cops. Jackson 911, what's going on there? Um, it's something that's going on, um, like a, a mile down the street, and I parked my my 18 wheeler in in the in the parking lot like a half a mile, and I'm trying to tell the officer that I, I parked right there. He don't want to hear nothing I got to say. That's John Kendrick, a Jacksonville truck driver. He was trying to park his 18 wheeler in his leased parking spot when a police officer wouldn't let him pass through. Stunned, he moved his vehicle to the median and called 911. The dispatcher told him to get the officer's car number, but when he stepped off the sidewalk, the officer ordered him to the ground, handcuffed him, and ticketed him for a pedestrian violation. But I was in the crosswalk at the time, and he still locked me up, kept me in the squad car for about four hours, five hours on the spot. The guy kept saying that you're not gonna have no job tomorrow, you're not gonna have no job tomorrow. Kendrick received one of 387 tickets issued to people for walking in the roadway where sidewalks are provided. 78% of those tickets went to black people. They just cruel, and they be cruel to black people. You know, I just hate to say it like that, but they be cruel, real cruel. They think that we won't fight, and that, that's what the problem is. They, they, they know that, that we're scared, that, that some people are scared to go to court. You know, me and I, I turned out, I, I hired a lawyer, and we fought, and um, got the the charges dropped. We spoke to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and they aren't concerned about disparities. They believe the numbers simply reflect who's breaking the law. They also said they're enforcing the law to keep people safe. If their citation efforts result in just one less pedestrian death, they say it's a win. One report ranked Jacksonville the fourth worst city in the country for pedestrian safety. But does giving pedestrian tickets actually help make walking safer? It's probably not a good use of resources to be ticketing people and having education and encourage, uh, enforcement programs in place uh, to, to regulate behavior that just isn't feasible and isn't possible because of the physical environment. That's Andy Clark, who was hired by the city of Jacksonville to consult on pedestrian safety. After a year, Clark issued a master plan and wrote that no amount of enforcement will change behavior in this area. He concluded that the city should invest in better infrastructure before it writes tickets. 
The reality is the physical environment, the infrastructure for walking and cycling is quite poor and there aren't sidewalks. There's a disconnected bikeway network. There's, uh, there are very few crosswalks. There's high speed roads that have very few opportunities to cross. I mean, it seems um, uh, unfortunate to say the least and capricious at worst to, to be ticketing people for behavior that just is, is um, isn't possible to, to, to do the right thing or be in the right place. The master plan found that Jacksonville was simply behind the curve on pedestrian safety. The city hadn't mapped which roads had sidewalks and put bus stops on streets that didn't have them. Experts agree that writing more pedestrian citations won't reduce the number of accidents. And the data shows that people getting the tickets are mostly black, more likely to be poor, and they're walking in a city that just wasn't built for pedestrians. All right, all right. Let's get to our reading, our letters of the day, our letters of the day. This one is from Yavin Ben Israel, our brother in California. Uh, Shalom Bishop, Most High in Christ, bless you and your family. Excellent Sabbath class, 25th as usual. Uh, it was good to see you back. Didn't know you were under the weather. I'm glad you opened the door to talk about nutrition a little bit. I didn't think it was my place not being a member yet to discuss things we should not be putting in our bodies. When I saw you drinking those Starbucks Frappuccinos, I just cringed because those things are sugar bombs. They have some cold brew coffees that are a lot better because they have little to no sugar and you can just add some half and half to smooth out the bitter coffee taste. Also, all that ocean spray juice is garbage because the first or second ingredient is high fructose corn syrup, HFCS, which the devil came up with because it was cheaper than real sugar. The body recognizes it as sugar, but because it's been artificially processed, the body says, let's just store it as fat. Dun, 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 dun. Since it didn't come like natural sugar. Check out the drinks from BAI. B -B -A -I. One bottle has only five calories and it tastes better. You and I are probably close in age, so I have to look out for the age brothers. Thank you, Yavin. I appreciate that. LOL. Lastly, there is no one diet that fits all. Everybody's body, everyone's body has their own particular need. I saw something about cut out dairy. What? I put cheese on damn near everything and never had health issues, but I have worked out all my life. LOL. The promised land was described as the land of what and honey, milk and honey. Yep. I don't drink a lot of milk, but it is needed to make cheese and real yogurt without sugar is very healthy. Now, when you hear brothers and sisters mention about dairy, if you notice a lot of the cows, they are filled with uh, GMOs or they're, they're overly processed. They're putting something in the cows and they're very huge now. And the milk comes out very quick and is uh, a lot of, what's that word called? Uh, pulse, or is it pulse? No pulp or something like that is in the movie. Y'all can do your research on is dairy good for us and I, there are few good researchers that make mention of it. But like Yavin said, everything's not good for everybody, but some things are good for certain people opposed to others. Uh, next paragraph, I was laughing at everyone swapping recipes on things to keep us healthy, but don't underestimate frequent hand washing. In my profession, it was stressed heavily because of who we have to deal with and it has kept me healthy for years. Bishop, since you do a lot of traveling, don't ever touch those black rubber rails on escalators. They are full of germs. I don't touch railing on anything. And if I do, I wash my hands right away. Stay Israel focused because it's nation time. Shalom. Thank you, Brother Yavin, or praises. And uh, brothers and sisters, if y'all have something you want to enlighten me on, share with me, don't hesitate. Send it. I'll read it. I will know about it. Okay? Or praise it. But don't write me talking about Jesus is white. Or color, don't that type of foolishness I'm not going to entertain. All right, uh, this is from our sister Yorana Bat, Bat El Israel to IUIC Booster Club and the Bishop to aid in gathering the 12 tribes of Israel to all the men on the front line. Stay well and be safe. We are thankful to the Most High for you. Most High in Christ bless you all. All praises. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you. This one is from our sister Deborah A. Now it's in script, so y'all give me a minute. Give me a minute. 
Dear Bishop Nathaniel, she spelled my name wrong, but it's all right. Love you. Shalom. Thank you and all the brothers for all of the hard work and dedicated work that you all do for Israel. You all are truly a blessing from the Most High, Yah. I've learned so much uh, watching your videos. I'm currently disabled and unable to attend classes, but this is the best I can do. All praise to the Lord, sister. No, not to worry. No worries. Thank you again. May the Most High bless you. All praises to the Most High. Shalom. This is Miss Deborah A. All praises. Thank you, Sister Deborah. All right. This is from our sister, Josephine H. She writes, Brother in Christ, Nathaniel B. Israel. She got my name right. All praises. Uh, use this wherever you see fit for the best. I thank Most High that you and your family are well from this sickness that's going around. And may the Most High in Christ keep his hands on all of his children in faith. Strong blessings to all. Love your teaching of the word. Thank you. Now, she wrote TKY. It took me a second to know that that said thank you. All praises. Thank you, Josephine. We appreciate you so much. This one is from Isaac and Rebecca. All right. It reads, Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. We, we are blessed to have you guiding us in the truth. Thank you for your sacrifice. And to all who are constantly on the front line for our nation. We pray for your strength and protection. All praises. Thank you, Isaac and Rebecca. All praises to the Lord. All praises. This one is from Brother Judah and Sister Atara. She sent a little note there. It reads, Shalom Bishop and faithful members. Look at that. Faithful members is underlined. Now, I know she underlined it because everybody that's with us ain't faithful. Like in Romans 9, it says, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Could you all have a repentant? Shalom, Bishop and faithful members. Thank you all for, for you all, for you, for all your services. <laughs> I Christ bless. Shalom to all faithful members. Excuse me. I pray all is well with all and family. Here's a prayer to help with whom may have tension in these trying times. Psalms 23, 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Selah. Most High in Christ bless, Brother Judah Israel and Sister Atara Israel. Thank you all so much. All praises, all praises. This letter here is from Sister Marsha H.S. Sister Marsha. Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. I wanted to take the time to say thank you for all that you do for the gathering of Israel. Your dedication, commitment, and enthusiasm is very inspirational. I grew up going to church, but I still had no understanding of the Bible before stumbling onto IUIC on YouTube about three years ago. I live two hours away, but I visit the Chicago school as often as I can. Because of IUIC, I have gained understanding, knowledge, and most important, I found the truth. Forever grateful, Marsha. Thank you so much, Marsha. Great letter, great letter of inspiration. This is from Sister Mary G. Mary G. She writes, Dear Bishop, just wanted to say to you, I am so blessed that God led me to IUIC. I'm learning so much about who I am and where I come from. I send so much, I send much love to you and all my brothers and sisters at IUIC. May God continually bless you, your family, and all the brothers and sisters at IUIC. And she wrote M P T T M G M H G. MPT. I don't know what the MPT stands for, but the TMG, TMHG is the Most High God. You would have to enlighten me on that, the MPT. P.S. I will, I will continue to support the ministry with God's will. All praises. Thank you, sis. All praises. This one is from uh, Jesus M. Jesus M. Greetings, leadership. I want to say thank you, IUIC, since I saw one of your videos 
My life has changed and I'm happy to say I'm working daily on keeping the commandments, but I still fall short. So I ask you to pray for me that I grow spiritually and that the Most High can use me to spread the gospel. And this is my donation to help wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, Jesus, definitely in your prayers, ask the Lord to use you in a mighty way. Ask him to endow you with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Okay, like when you read James chapter 1, it tells you to pray for that thing. Okay, and ask him to use you to help gather the 12 tribes of Israel. Oh, he'll use you to do his will. All praises. All right. This one is from Sister Laura. Laura M. All praise to the Most High. This is my donation to help you spread the word all over the world and let our people know we are the true Israelites. Thank you, Ohio IC, for Bible study online. I watch it all day and I'm learning so much. I love my fringes and head wrap. LOL. Thank you, Laura M. All praises, all praises. Okay. Uh, this one is from Sister Dorothy M. Sister Dorothy writes, Thank you, Bishop and Captains and the leaders in Israel United in Christ. I've watched all your videos. All our videos. Hey, don't forget we got a new channel, uh, Lost IUIC Lost Files, where we show our beginning in 2006 on the street. Started in 2003, actually. But in 2006 is when YouTube be, uh, became, um, I was able to use it at that time, 2006. And you will see us younger. We didn't have garments. Uh, fighting through the wilderness, fighting through the darkness in the minds of our people. So y'all check it out. Um, she writes, I watch all your videos. Now I have a greater understanding of the scriptures. I don't just read and hear. I obey the commandments with understanding. Thanks to you and the leaders there. I thank the Most High for you all. God bless all of you and the work y'all do. Dorothy M. P.S. My phone number is blank, 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 blank. Please give me a shout out Tuesday so I know you receive my free will offering. All praises. Yes, Sister Dorothy M. We got it and we thank you so much. And I'm going to give your phone number to Deacon Asaph for him to reach out to you and thank you. Okay, all praises, all praises. Now, let's get to the, the donations. I want to thank y'all, brothers and sisters. And always remember, there's no donation too small or too great. Okay, but no, there is donations that's too great. If it's your entire life savings, please, you need that to survive. Okay, now if you will it to us, you can do so if you want to do that. But I remember this was this one sister, she just wanted to give a whole bank account. I said, no, me and Asa were like, no, 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 we ain't taking it. Okay, you do and give as the Lord allows and blesses you with, I want you to use some common sense, understand that thing. All right. We want to thank Sheila K and Jada R. Thank you, Sheila. All praises. We want to thank Sheila K again and Jada R. Thank you so much. We want to thank, uh, I only see initials on, oh, this I believe is Jesus. All praises. All praises. We want to thank uh, Alicia. All praise, Alicia I. Thank you so much. We want to thank uh, Laura M. Thank you, Laura. We want to thank Dave and Katrina P. Dave and Katrina P. Thank you so much. Uh, we want to thank uh, Mary G. Thank you. We want to thank Marsha H. S. Thank you, Marsha. All praises to the Lord. We want to thank Charles and Laura. Thank you, Charles and Laura. Charles and Laura again. Thank you. Uh, we want to thank Ilya Iliana F. Iliana. F, all praise. I thought I had it wrong for a second, but I caught it. Uh, we also want to thank uh, Sherilyn A.L. Sherilyn A.L. Thank you, Sherilyn. All praises to the Lord. We also want to thank Pelalila I. Thank you, Pelalila. We want to thank um, Judah I and Atara. Judah and Atara, thank you so much. Um, Isaac and Rebecca, thank you so much. Josephine H., thank you, Josephine. Deborah R.I., thank you, Deborah. Johnny, Johnny B.D., thank you, Johnny, all praises. We want to thank Dorothy M., thank you, Dorothy, all praises. Um, Claudestal R., thank you, Claudestal R. Sheila K. and Jada R., thank you so much. We want to thank Ellen W., thank you, Ellen W. And last but not least, we want to thank Stephen B, Stephen B, and also Yavin 
Ben Israel. Can't forget you. All praises to the Lord. Now, y'all, Ben, you wrote me a second letter. You told me not to read out loud, and um, I'm not. But I do have it. All praises to the Lord. So, brothers, sisters, you know how I love to say, stay faithful, stay focused, but most of all, let's all stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ, bless. Love you all. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.